So now we're entering the trail. I imagine that this very well-worn trail was non-existent back in the 1850s. Bramble patches were a good place to hide when escaped slaves were on their journey. Dogs, horses, and men, and whoever was looking for them would have shied away from these types of areas. So, many escaped slaves would dig a hole underneath a bramble patch and find a little bit of warmth, get some rest that surely was much needed on a journey such as theirs. Here we come to what on this walking trail is called a crossing of the paths. It's well marked for us so that we know which way to go. Escaped slaves, however, had to follow trail clues like bent limbs or stones that were piled in some kind of special way. It would be very, very easy to lose your way. And if you turned the wrong way at a trail crossing, you could lose your way completely. This type of large hollow tree would be something that fugitive slaves would have used to make a small fire and for cooking that would have been less visible or to hide in at night to try to get some rest. Quite an impressive large tree. Around this corner, you can see another bridge crossing a stream. Again, really, most slaves didn't know how to swim. And creeks and rivers were immense obstacles. They were dangerous if the water was high or rushing. Obviously, this one is very quiet right now, but it hasn't always been the case. Sometimes they might find a hidden boat every once in a while. There might be a ferryman who would discreetly bring them across. But it was just another one of the many obstacles that added to the danger. On the other side of this stream, the woods open up to a very open field. You can imagine how incredibly dangerous an area like this was. There was nowhere to hide. They would keep to the edges as best they can as best they could. Farm fields might have provided crops that were tall enough for them to pass through um, and stay hidden, but an open field like this would have given them so no, no such advantage. Uh, it's more of a kind of a circumstantial thing because uh, we noticed the Sandy Spring Quaker community voted to get against slavery um, and that they prohibited slavery among their members. Um, and we know that there were lots of freed people 
freed at, in, formerly enslaved people in the area. So we can you know can put two and two together, figure it out that there was probably some underground railroad activity around here, but nobody's documented it or it's, you know there's there's no secret map that anybody's found or anything like that. Um, we also know the Palmer, the mansion where he started. Uh, Palmer was a Quaker and he was um, read out of the community, of the Quaker community, because his wife, who was not Quaker, came to the marriage with, uh, I believe it was six slaves. And the Quaker community said to him, he says, okay, fine, you know, you can marry whoever you want to marry, but if you're going to be part of our community, you're not supposed to have slaves. And he said, well, um, too bad. And so he kept the slaves, and uh, he was read out of the community. So he wasn't he wasn't a member of the the Quaker community anymore.